Edo Arctic 2, Polar Research for Education, innovative program in Poland and Norway. Webinars. Hi, Paul. I'm uh, a researcher here in the north. I'm uh, some of you maybe uh, been listening to Cornelia Klutsch, uh, the lecture of her, and she is one of my colleagues up here. So I'm uh, situated uh, a little bit in the north. Um, no, have we a problem? No, we like. Bruk piltastene dine kanskje på tastaturet? Der kom det. Nå, nå kom det. Ja. ja. So just now I'm in this window. You see there, that's my office. And this is outside of the building up here uh, this morning about uh, 7.30. So you see partly sun, it's more cloudy now. So it's even drizzling a few uh, small, small snugs of, uh, of uh, snow. But uh, like you see here, we have about half a meter ish uh, of uh, snow. Last year it was about one meter for the same, nearly the same day. So down down below you see how it looks in the other seasons as well. Okay. Uh, large uh, uh, predators, uh, with in not, we're not including the polar bear, but these predators is basically. Uh, living in the all Europe and uh, partly of uh, most of Asia, uh, Russian area, and then some of them also included in the uh, North American continent. So here you see my place, and um, today we have people from Russia participating, I, I believe, maybe. I don't get this uh, line of the participants now. Some from Albania and some from Poland. So I hope that you will understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to follow the chat in case you have any special uh, questions. And if I say something very strange, please uh, ask me. So, in uh, South, in Africa, we have Big Five. This is the elephant, the black and white rhinos, and then the leopard, and then the lion, and then the buffalo, Cape buffalo. So up here we have uh, uh, some similarities and uh, they are maybe more uh, interesting in some ways. Uh, every animal is interesting, of course, but uh, they have special feature because uh, to me they are in my backyard. I even had a bear in my garage and the golden eagle was flying over here last autumn just outside of the office. So we did see it for several, several uh, occasions uh, tripping flying across. Well, the lynx is not that common up here. The wolverine is not so common up here and the wolf is not so common in my areas, but they occur. And this autumn uh, in, uh, in uh, October, there was a, a wolf that was shot in a, a small village on the Russian side of the border about uh, 40 kilometers away from me or 50 kilometers away from me. So it was inside and then there was also uh, wolf tracks uh, across uh, the reindeer uh, territory. Okay. So here you see uh, in uh, southern Europe, uh, this uh, gulo gulo, the wolverine, is not uh, common. So here's the rusomaka, uh, uh, rusomak, uyuku or something. I'm, my my, my uh, Albanian is not very good, but uh, you see the, the name from, from this golden eagle as well. I guess you know the, the lynx and the uh, wolf and the, and the bear. So, uh, uh, wolf is interesting as it looks like a dog. And um, of course, uh, the dog is uh, said to have some ancestor genes from the wolf, uh, maybe from the golden coyote or the golden chacal, uh, and then uh, combined. Actually, the, the, uh, the golden chacal is uh, very interesting because this is the only uh, one which is mating and making uh, siblings or uh, uh, cubs from a mix with wolf and even fox and dogs, of course. 
So that is uh, uh, the, the golden chacal is very interested. And last year we got the golden chacal even up here in the north. So this is one of the species which is uh, spreading and also mixing with wolf. That is uh, a little bit uh, uh, dangerous actually. So here is a, a photo I made uh, from a, a family of uh, wolves. And uh, what you can actually see here is also the, the this is the uh, main uh, dominant uh, tree in the family. And here this is a, a, a wolf which is not so uh, dominant. The tail is down below. So and as well this in the uh, out fringe. So this means that these uh, wolves is not uh, not the center. The center is always center of wolves, the main alpha male and female. They are always in the center. Dogs uh, uh, is small compared to big wolves. So you, when you see a wolf, normally many of them can be quite small, uh, like a, a, a German Shepherd dog or something like that. But uh, the biggest wolf I've seen was about 90 kilos and the path of it was bigger, much bigger than my, by my hand. So it's uh, fantastic animals. The jaws and teeth is uh, very uh, developed. And you can see these uh, huge animals. Uh, they are actually moving quite swift, even in deep snow. And they are uh, 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 the main food is then uh, this type of um, uh, predator uh, uh, prey, like uh, like uh, moose uh, or even buffalo bee sounds, uh, but also uh, quite a lot of smaller things. So especially reindeers. They are uh, 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 quite a uh, what you call a, a nice dish for the wolf. So reindeer herder has a problem, and that is one of the points uh, why we don't have so many wolves in the northern Norway together with the reindeer herding. Uh, the wolves and reindeer is not uh, a nice combination. So a wolf uh, like the small one here easily kills 50 uh, reindeers during a day. Or the, and the wolf is killing down when the, the prey is easy to catch, then they kill quite a lot. This is uh, a rule among all the uh, big predators. Uh, so even bears and, and lynx and wolverine, they can kill several. The, the wolf is uh, eating and sharing uh, and storing to some degrees, uh, the, storing the, fo the food. Uh, this uh, can be hunting in flocks, that is the most usual, especially when they're hunting the bigger animals like moose. When they are uh, on their own, they may be uh, more going for the reindeers. And uh, normally a uh, wolf will bite the reindeer in the back of the back, uh, backbone close to the knee uh, from the backside. And after this will tear apart the muscle there, which is making the, the reindeer able to jump in the snow or in the jump in the, in the, in, during in the summer as well. So this makes the reindeer uh, more slowly moving. And then after uh, chasing it uh, for uh, some hundred meters, uh, the, the wolf will start to bite it uh, from the belly, from the side and then it will uh, bite it uh, by the neck, usually from throat side. But they even, uh, when they have a lot of uh, reindeers, they will, uh, uh, like I said, kill and they will eat maybe like uh, 20 kilos per day or even more. The, the foot of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the wolf is quite similar uh, from front and back. There's a uh, small uh, differences, but like you see here, you can see the claws and you see the the path uh, in between uh, these uh, pads in 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 the path. And uh, the track will look something like this. 
So uh, this is uh, front feet, back feet. So this is the, the close up of a path, and this is from compared to a dog. Here we have a straight line. If you do like this, and this is uh, the wolf. If it was a dog, this line would be going up here. So they have a little bit longer uh, uh, side toes, and the middle toes is more retracted uh, for a dog. Mm -hmm. well, it doesn't move there. Yeah. <clears throat> so I say this is uh, puppets of uh, 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 a family of uh, a domestic uh, or in uh, wolves from a zoo. So here, these <clears throat> these are uh, quite easy to uh, tame to get them acquainted with people. Uh, and this is in some areas where the wolf is uh, close to people without uh, never being seen because they know how to deal and they are afraid of people usually. Uh, but uh, they, they can be quite close without getting into contact. And we see here it looks quite much like just like a dog. So normally the uh, female, uh, alpha female, uh, which is up there, make uh, cubs uh, normally every second year, uh, sometimes every year, depending on the food resources. And this is then dependent, uh, making the, the litter of um, uh, four, about four cubs, usually two or three will survive for the first years. So again here, the reading the wolf, so when you meet a wolf in the nature, you can read by the signs of the ears, the face expression, the tail, and the body shape, what it is uh, telling you. So there's a lot of signal in this picture. This wolf don't like me, uh, so this is uh, telling that I'm not happy with you. So this, uh, this is one unique photo, actually. This is a wolf which is uh, shitting. So this is, the feces is coming here, and this is a, a, a picture because we use uh, this uh, 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 excrements as well. We can use uh, the, the, the footprints of the, uh, of the wolf to collect the DNA. So we can read the, from the footprint. So every time uh, you will step on the floor with your bare uh, feet, then you uh, deposit, you put DNA from your cells on the floor. And the same happened with the wolf when it's walking in the, in the snow. Uh, every footsteps, there is a few cells that is lost from the body and which is still in the snow. So just collecting the, the, the uh, footprints, then we can collect cells and then we can make DNA analysis to see which individuals that have been walking. And also when we find the, the, the shit, we can make the DNA to see which individual which that have been uh, making this uh, feces. So this is one way to survey the, uh, the populations of wolf, for example. As well, we can see here, uh, like uh, maybe some of you have heard uh, Cornelia Klutsch uh, telling, we can use the microbiota, which is the uh, small bacteria, everything, and we can see how the, uh, the, uh, the wolf has uh, been living, if it is a healthy wolf or it's a uh, lesser uh, wolf. And also from the feces, we can see the stress. So there's a different hormones, which is left in, this, in the uh, intestine and then following with the feces into out, out of the, uh, the wolf and there we can make the analysis on how it has been stressed and, and other uh, uh, problems of the, of the wolf. So this is a, a normal, uh, normal big wolf, about uh, uh, a shit from a normal big wolf which is about 10 centimeter, 11 centimeter here and it's about uh, three or four centimeter uh, wide. So it's normally the wolf shit is much bigger than a dog shit. 
So that is one of the first things. But like you saw on the other picture, this wolf is a, a young wolf. So here the, the feces is not so big. Feces is very interesting. So uh, meeting a wolf and looking it into his eyes, that is uh, something special. When you listen to this uh, howling, uh, the, when they are crying in the night, that uh, is uh, something special. But when you meet a wolf and see it directly in the eyes, that is something that you never will forget. Another uh, animal is the stalking uh, lynx. It's very seldom seen. Uh, actually, I only seen them uh, twice uh, live in my, in my life. So uh, one was in southern Norway and one was here up in the north. So it was about uh, 200 meters away from me. This one I saw up here. I was walking on the top of a mountain and in front of me there was some small cliffs. And between the cliffs there was big stones and between the stones there was another small stone uh, it looked like in the first glimpse and then suddenly it turned to be an uh, animal with ears uh, pointing ears and then uh, i understood it was a lynx and a quarter of a millisecond later it was totally di uh, uh, disappeared so this uh, meeting lynx uh, such that is uh, fantastic. This is from a zoological garden, uh, and this is from another place. <clears throat> you see the lynx. Uh, it's uh, actually it looks like a raw deer. It's the legs are extremely long when you see them walking. So the, and the short tail, the uh, very short tail, which is a small tip of black. Uh, which is then uh, reminding a little bit of about a small deer or a raw deer or such but it moves much more uh, gracile so it can move like a like a shadow right? it's fantastic to see them when they are walking they walk just very gentle slowly uh, and then they make a jump of three meters just up in the air into a tree or up to a small stone or something Uh, the lynx is uh, some weight about uh, 20 kilo that is a normal link and sometimes they can gain up to about uh, 25 uh, no, sorry 35 45 kilos however the claws of the lynx is extremely big they are like you saw the leopard <clears throat> from uh, from africa the lynx claw is uh, as big as the claws of the leopard even though they are much smaller, but the path is quite big, and this is because of the snow mobility, the, to, the ability to walk on snow. This lynx is uh, just laying down. It looks like it's uh, sleeping, but uh, this lynx is having 200% control of everything which is around. So this is a signal that is to that is actually is alerted. When you look to the ears and you look to the nostrils and you look to the eyes, it's, it's, it's glimpsing, but this is fake glimpsing, it's actually looking. And you see the, the hairs on the whiskers, the, the hairs on the, on the snout, on the, in the face of the, the lynx, this is also maneuvering. So like I said, the path, uh, the foot, for, uh, foot of the uh, lynx is quite big. So when they kill the animal, they are usually uh, biting in the throat. They're biting the, this uh, throat joint here, uh, which is then uh, killing the, or suffocating the animals so that it doesn't get the, the air. Lynx is, however, they are more uh, uh, happy to catch smaller animals like mice and hares and such. So when they're killing reindeers, that is a sim, uh, that is a, what you call a, a sign that, that there is less of this other type of food in the area compared to the reindeers. Of course, it's a cat. Uh, 
all these uh, animals is actually keeping their uh, fur, their uh, their uh, uh, furs quite clo uh, clean. Uh, to be clean is uh, necessary to avoid the parasites and everything. So then this uh, is uh, a female and a cub, a small kitten. And usually they, uh, they, these animals is uh, solitary. They means that uh, the, the female and males meets, meets now and then, but they live uh, separate all the most of the uh, time of the year. Uh, except then the females, which is giving birth uh, to the the kittens or the, the cubs. Usually she gives birth to uh, about two, and then uh, normally one of them is surviving. Actually, this uh, female here is an old female, and she is the grandmother of this. So this is from a zoological garden. I was working at the University of Oslo, and here this individual actually was uh, uh, living in the 1980s. So I fed her at the university and I went to this zoological garden uh, many years later in 2006 and then uh, she was actually there. Um, I didn't know it uh, from before uh, in, in before or prior. So then when I came there, this animal uh, uh, reacted quite strange compared to the other lynx that was in this, the, the, the mother of this and such. And she recognized me. That was the main point. So these cats has uh, quite long memories. Both uh, lynx and, and uh, uh, wolf is uh, uh, having like a home area. And then they are migrating in this uh, home area and the youngsters is migrating out of the home area uh, when they're getting old enough or getting to the, the conflict uh, period. So here you see the little the grandmother and the, and the cub. So this is the feces uh, from, uh, uh, from lynx. They are uh, more like a cat thing combined like a size of a dog. So when you find them, you can find them in some of the, the countries which is participating now, but they're not very common. And usually, so here is killed, uh, this is a dead uh, sheep. So here is, uh, uh, you can find remnants from uh, some of the bigger prey, but normally they eat most of the a thing from like mice and, and hares and such. Everything is disappearing. <clears throat> so uh, uh, another animal is the brown bear. Uh, this is also uh, mainly uh, solitary, living alone. And then females and meats uh, and males are meeting uh, for mating in the summer. Uh, and sometimes the, the males is uh, uh, act actually hunting for the cubs of the female to kill the youngsters. Uh, so this is infanticide. This is uh, as well found in lions back to Africa compared. So here you have uh, big, uh, big similarities in some of the, uh, of the ecosystems uh, function. When a male bear is killing the, uh, the cubs, uh, the female bear will go into Oestulus. She will be ready to make mating in uh, about 10 days. So a week, about a week later, uh, she will get into uh, possibility to get pregnant. And then the male will mate her in order to make his uh, child or bear cubs to survive. It's a, a biological life history strategy. It's uh, quite cruel, but it is uh, functioning for the bears and from quite a lot of other animals. So this is something to understand as well. But uh, in October, the bears uh, go uh, then into the sleep. And uh, there is a lot of uh, interesting mechanisms happening in the bear when the bear is uh, going to sleep. Uh, for example, it doesn't get osteoporosis, this uh, weakening of the bones like we humans is getting. 
the, the bones actually uh, reconstruct uh, while it is uh, sleeping or resting. And uh, as well, the, the female that was, uh, uh, get, uh, was uh, inseminated or getting pregnant in summer period, she will not develop the youngster or the fetus, the young, it's basically the egg divided into the gastrula stage, uh, first stage, and then this will kept stored in her body in until uh, she goes uh, sleeping. And then after sleeping or while sleeping, the, the young bear cubs will develop. And this is harmonizing the period of birth of the uh, uh, bear cubs. So here you see uh, in our area, the bears is making uh, their own den every year. So a new den every year. In other places and in historical periods, uh, like back, back to Stone Age and such, the bears was basically using much of the same uh, uh, caves and uh, dens. So this is a strategy to avoid hunting is that uh, they move from place to place and don't use the same uh, den anymore. In, inside in the den, this is a model, uh, but uh, then the female develops the, the cubs in nine weeks. We use nine months, you remember? So then they are about uh, uh, 200 grams, about 20 centimeter long, such. They're looking like dogs, uh, basically. Blind, quite pale, white uh, skin, no hair. Uh, uh, partly developed uh, limbs and such, but they develop very quickly. And when they are uh, given birth, they are quite small to the female, which is making the birth easy to her. So that is another interesting uh, phenomenon. So here you can see, you see the eye of the bear. And here is the bear sleeping on a madras. This is the 1st of March. Then the bear, uh, the bear cubs was born about uh, Christmas, after Christmas, New Year. So every bear is born the same, basically the same period of the, of the year, about the new year. So when they are two months old, they are, will be like this. This is 8th of March. Then you can see the two bear cubs and you see the female, the, uh, the path of her. So this is the female in the den and these are moving, these are active, these are developing the bodies while they are only living from one only thing. They are living from the milk of the mother. So the milk which he is producing is then giving uh, the, all the development for these cubs, the hairs, the, the, the fur, uh, the eyes, the intestines, everything. One very interesting uh, phenomenon is that the mother is not going to toilet during this uh, uh, sleeping period, which is lasting from uh, October-ish until May. She don't go to toilet, no, no shit, no peeing. And she reabsorb most of the energies. She is as expelling a little bit with her breath, but not much. So these youngsters is uh, active and sucking uh, the milk. The female has four tits, uh, so they have possibilities uh, to, uh, to feed uh, uh, four cubs. Very, very seldom it is uh, born uh, five, actually only twi uh, twice we know from nature, but in zoological garden where they have much better conditions, they have uh, uh, a few occasions or some occasions with five uh, bear cubs. Um, so this uh, about uh, 8th of March, they will be approximately one, one and a half kilo uh, heavy. And you remember there were 200 grams when they was born. So this is uh, then uh, a, boy, uh, a, a five months uh, old uh, bear cub. And then they comes out of the snow, of, from the den through the snow and start their life uh, outside. And they, they make a lot of sounds just like uh, humans. So they sounds like uh, human babies. 
the big uh, uh, adults or subadults, which is uh, uh, these cubs will uh, live with the mother for two or maybe three years. So after two and a half years, they will leave her or she will leave them actually. And then uh, they have to survive on their own. And here you see the uh, an adult one, uh, which is then quite active and they are active uh, in two reasons because they have basically they have not been to toilet and then they need to get the toilet system function going starting to run in the body and this is uh, a procedure in a lot of uh, 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 local people uh, language there is special words for this behavior of the bear when it's uh, starting to make the first uh, feces making the first shitting but here you can see the uh, the front path and you see the, the back uh, path so it's looking quite much the same as us uh, humans and actually it's uh, quite uh, gentle when it's walking and uh, even the snow is uh, deep in the spring it managed to maneuver quite quickly and it can even outmaneuver the moose quite easily. So normally the bears is not getting that old uh, because they are fighting. They are uh, also eating quite a lot of different things. Most bears is not carnivores. They are actually uh, eating uh, different types of uh, vegetations and especially blueberries. Here you see the the uh, the, the path uh, of the the front uh, foot, which is then making this uh, print, and then the back foot, which is making this print. So you can see how they have been moving, and then you can see every bear is different sizes. So the size of this is about uh, 20, uh, 20 centimeter. This is about uh, uh, fifteen centimeter, fifteen or twelve centimeters across, depending. Like I said, the moose uh, can be uh, one of the prey that is killed by the moose. No, well, sorry, by the by the bear, and the bear will then try to hide it under the snow, for example. And this is one of the uh, things that you can see. This is a bear and not another animal. And the the bear will smash it and bite it and crush quite the bi the big parts of the the bones, like heads. Uh, the cranium will be struck, and then also the ribs and all these things will be. Uh, slammed by the bear foot and uh, this is the remnants after the bear so it, it basically eats uh, most everything so uh, the jaws with the teeth is usually left and then here you see the the, the tip of the claw so this is the tip of the claw uh, the nail so to say from the moose this is left and this is also uh, quite quite uh, interesting with the bear that that when you find a claw in the terrain, it is left by a bear. So bear can store uh, food for a very, very long time. Uh, the, the lynx is not uh, storing uh, food for a long time. It will eat it successful uh, after uh, or continuously. And then the, as well, uh, the wolf will also basically uh, eat the thing uh, there and then, but also uh, keep some uh, traces for later on. But they are not very, very much uh, storing. Well, this is a uh, feces from a bear. This is, uh, 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 you can see small pieces of bones and hairs and such. So this is what we call a meat shit, a meat fe fecalium. And this is a berry fecalium, and like the uh, uh, the, the bears eats in the autumn, they eat the blueberries, but also other berries. Uh, so this fe uh, fecalium here is about a little bit less than a liter. So uh, it's uh, quite a big thing, which is on the ground. And you see the berries here is not uh, very well uh, digested, but still the bear is getting approximately the double uh, of the energy out of the berries compared to what we humans are doing. So they are much more efficient. 
And a beer can eat uh, something like uh, 90 liters per day when you have good conditions of uh, lots of blueberries. That means about 50 kilos of uh, blueberries. And from this 50 kilos, it will gain approximately uh, two or three or four kilos of fat to the body. And this is very essential uh, for the beer. So every beer is depending on the berry production, especially blueberries, to get the, the right number of, uh, of uh, blubber or fat, which they will live from during their sleeping in the winter. So one of the research I'm doing is putting out hair snares. This is a barbed wire, which is between the uh, four trees like this. So it's make a square. And it's half a meter above the ground approximately. And it's very, very important that it, it is only one line of this. In the middle, we make a scent, uh, a smelly uh, material. And then the beer is uh, climbing over or uh, crawling under the, uh, the barbed wire to get into the uh, scent and investigate what this fantastic perfume is like. So this uh, perfume, I call it Chanel number no. six. It's uh, actually made in America uh, first time uh, 40 years ago approximately. But this uh, perfume is uh, ox blood combined with fish oils and it smells uh, fantastic. It smells so much that if I spill anything on my clothes, uh, I'm not allowed to come into my house for my life. And dogs and everything is uh, reacting on me on several hundred meters. So it's quite interesting. This smell is uh, made uh, so it should last for two weeks. So we pour about one and a half liter into this uh, 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 small pile of uh, roots and uh, branches of uh, trees and some of the lichens or mosses, which is then uh, functioning like a spongy. So this makes the, the odor, the smell to evaporate through the terrain. And this works like something of uh, 50, uh, sorry, uh, five kilometers. Uh, so this is working quite long distance making this uh, attraction for the bear. So this perfume is fantastic for the bear. They uh, receive it uh, even better than honey. So then they are attracted and then they will, the bears in the area will come to this hair snare and there we can collect the hair of the bear to make the DNA analysis, to make the individual analysis of which bear that was in the area. So these are method uh, of uh, non-invasive uh, sampling to see how animals is uh, moving and sharing the terrain and what their uh, habit, uh, habits are like. So then here you see the bear here. This is the, the bulb of the bear here, which is the interesting where the DNA is. So here you see a hair snare and the barbed wire with some wigs of, uh, or big uh, aggregations of uh, uh, fur from the bear. And this is put into a grid system. So it's in each of this, there is one uh, such uh, hair snare in each of this uh, grid. So we are covering Finland, Norway, and Russia uh, in this, uh, this particular project. Bears is also happy with the telephone poles and electric poles. So where this is uh, protected with tar outside, the bear will uh, shrub their uh, body to the, to the, uh, to the uh, masts. And then the hair will be at, uh, attacked the, to, uh, to, the, to the poles. The other animal, which is uh, then uh, the wolverine, is a, a quite uh, shy animal. It's occurring approximately f five of them in my neighborhood here, but they are not uh, very common uh, to see. Actually, the, basically we see the see the the footprints now and then. But it moves. Uh, this is uh, having a type of a home range, but it moves in very very big areas. So it's a real globe trotter. The bear can also move uh, considerably, and as well the wolf. Uh, but this is the one that makes this. Uh, the wolverine is not making a. 
then in the way of uh, the bears and such, but they make uh, uh, the females make a den where they are uh, keeping the their cubs. Uh, uh, they give uh, uh, birth uh, in uh, about middle middle winter, and then they stay. The cubs is one or two or three or four, depending, uh, which is then living in the cave uh, where she has uh, found to be safe. And usually this is far, far down into the uh, the, the, the ground uh, or in between the, the rocks. So it's very, very far into to go to see the, the find the cubs. She will feed them by milk. She is not uh, not sleeping like the uh, bear, fem female bear, but uh, quite active and out and getting uh, food for the for the cubs. So here you see the the foot uh, the front foot of the the wolverine is very big is much bigger or as big as my hand, so it's uh, a very interesting uh, mammals. And here you see the claws, uh, the bear's claws is as well big. And when you compare to the uh, lynx, the lynx is retracting, pulling the claws into. So you never will see uh, a, a footprint. Uh, from a lynx with the claws. If you see the claws in a lynx uh, footprint, there is something very wrong. And here you see the wolverine is also having uh, uh, five, uh, um, five uh, digits. Both on the uh, front and uh, the back foot. And here you see the, the, the prints of the footprints. They, Typically, they lo looks like it's only having three legs because they put the fourth, uh, the front foot and the back foot in the same in the middle, and then I have this uh, very uh, specific type of uh, uh, jumping and running, which is uh, going very very fast. The wolverine is uh, basically killing by biting the neck, and it's uh, it's very strong in the jaws. Uh, so it makes this uh, scenes uh, head, uh, keeping the head up, uh, just to, like cutting it off of the reindeers. So the reindeers is typically walking with the head down to the ground and cannot uh, uh, pull the head up. And this is uh, so sometimes the the wolverine is uh, stopped in the attack, and then uh, they will uh, the the reindeers will be keep walking like this. The reindeers don't necessarily die from this, and it's a, a later bites that will kill uh, the reindeers. One very interesting thing with the uh, with the fur from the wolverine, uh, the fur of the wolverine is uh, never attracting moisture. So when you have these uh, anoraks in the polar areas, these were made by the French. With the with the wolverine uh, uh, fur, because then it doesn't get these icy crystals, which is close to your face, and then you keep your face a little bit warmer instead of having uh, frozen uh, vapor from your breath uh, onto your face. So that is special things that we can learn from the wolverine how the uh, how the fur is uh, functioning. I try to make it going. Yeah. The, the last of the five is the golden eagle. Uh, and this is so difficult to make a photographing. Uh, this is uh, uh, actually I have seen two golden eagle last week, uh, but um, several times, but uh, making a photo from them, that is uh, fantastic uh, difficult. This is uh, the golden eagle and the sea eagle is two different uh, animals, very different. Actually, the gold, uh, sea eagle is uh, the uh, vulture and this is a type of a hawk. So here on the bill, you can see the hawk claw. So it's a falcon. Egg. And then uh, this is um, uh, an animal which is, of course, quite big. Uh, more about two meters uh, wingspan, but it maneuver, maneuvers very, very gentle in the forest and between the trees. So it's uh, good for the hunting of the 
uh, the hare and fox and smaller mammals, but also that kills uh, raw deers and deers and uh, reindeers and even uh, the calf of moose. The, the, uh, the golden eagle is having a fantastic style on this uh, back claw and it used this, the front claws is also very powerful uh, and this is, but this is fantastic, this back claw. So it's basically five centimeter or longer and the uh, animal use this uh, first when they're killing a reindeer, they will go down across the reindeer and then it will puncture the lungs of the reindeer. So the reindeer is not able to, to breathe uh, properly. And then when the reindeer is exhausted, the, uh, the golden eagle will go to the head and then they will put the claws in the, in, in the back of the head of the reindeer, which is then go, uh, opening the brains. And then the, the reindeer is immediately dead. But it, it doesn't go f uh, necessary through the uh, foramen magnum, this big opening in the cranium, but it also goes even through the thinner parts of the, of the, of the skull. So uh, this claw is really fantastic. I've been handling a few uh, uh, golden eagles that has been hurted, so they was not able to fly. And then when you hold them and you try to open the foot, this is not possible because there is some type of junctions in there, which is then totally locked. So you have to really break the toes of the, the and the bones of the eagle to open the, uh, this uh, this uh, the claw again. And when they put your claw around you, and then that is uh, stuck, then you are really stuck in the eagle. So that is interesting. By now, the golden eagles are going to uh, nest, or they have already started the uh, uh, spring season up here with uh, a meter of snow in the far, uh, on the mountains and uh, half a meter of snow down here in the in the valleys in the tree zone. So then. This is interesting to see when they start to put the eggs in April and then the, the youngsters is hatching and then in July they start to fly. So it's a very long period for a bird to develop. Yeah. So I'm to the end of this. I spent quite a lot of time, but I hope uh, that I didn't see any questions. Watch other recordings from webinars on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash edoarctic. Edoarctic 2, from polar research to scientific passion, innovative nature education in Poland and Norway receives a grant of 240,000 euros received from Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway under EEA funds.